Right, next up I want to talk about the Resize Observer. Now this is the third of the Observer APIs that are available. Um, I've done videos on the other two, the Intersection Observer and the Mutation Observer. I'll put those links down in the description for you. You'll also find the code sample that I'm using in here uh, linked to down in the description as well. So what are we doing with the Resize Observer? Well, it has to do with the fact that we can now treat resizing elements on the page as if it were an event. And then that event can trigger other code to take place. So my starter code here, my very basic example, I've got a layout with two sections here. And these two sections are set in the layout as being uh, using Flexbox, but in their using the column direction. As I resize this, once I get above about 900 pixels for the size of my container, that's the pink block there. There we go. Uh, sorry, a thousand pixels over that. At that point, I'm adding a CSS class here, big. And you can see that as I shrink and grow this, it adds and removes that CSS class. So, all right, fine. I'm changing the layout, I'm changing some background colors. There's nothing that I've done so far that really I couldn't accomplish with media queries. So if that's what you're thinking, you're right. There's nothing so far that media queries couldn't achieve. What we're going to do here is we're going to add other functionality when or change the content when we reach a certain breakpoint. So I'm going to be using the Resize Observer. I'm going to watch for this change when I switch from one column to two column. And what I want to do is I'm going to go off and I'm going to fetch an image and I'm going to actually add the image into this content when I reach that breakpoint. So when it becomes two columns, I'm going to add brand new content into the page. Now, if we say that we're doing a mobile first layout, when we're building this layout, we don't need that additional content. I don't want to make that additional network call to go off and fetch an image and download and use it. It's only if the person has a large enough screen, say at this point, now it's big enough. Now I want to actually make the call, get that content and add it to my page. So that's what I'm going to be doing with the Resize Observer. So let's take a look at the code. Jumping in here. Okay, here we are with the Resize Observer being added on DOM content loaded. Here's our HTML again. We're creating a Resize Observer. And the constructor function just needs one parameter. What is the callback function that you want to call every time that there's a change made to one of the elements that you're observing? Well, once I've created this Resize Observer object, I can call its observe method and I can pass elements that I want to watch. Now, I could call observe a bunch of times and have a whole bunch of elements that I'm watching. In this example, I'm only doing one, my main wrapper around everything. So when that gets resized, it is going to trigger this callback function down here. This callback function will give me an array of all of the different elements that are being watched. So that's what this entries is. In the record of entries that are being observed, we want to find the first one. Since we're only dealing with one object, we just want the first thing in this array. And it will be held inside of a property called target. This target property is my div. Looking up here, this div container, that is the entry. So the first entry in my array is that div. And it has a property, the entry has a property called content rect. This is going to give me things like the top left, bottom right, width, height of the element itself. So I can check and see, okay, if the width of the content box of this element is greater than 900, then I'm going to add the class big to that container div. Otherwise, I'm going to remove the class big. So that's what we're doing now. We're toggling back and forth between having and not having this class. So there we go adding it, removing it. All right. This is the point where everything up until now could have been achieved with media queries. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add additional functionality in here. So I've got a function called add photo and another one called remove photo. I've already written the code. I'll show you that in a second. This is what I can't do with media queries. 
I can't have JavaScript that runs to alter or update functionality or remove functionality on a page. So my functions for add and remove, the remove just simply says, find the image element that's inside the section with the class two and remove it. Now I'll come back to talking about this in just a minute. The add checks to see if I don't already have an image. Now this is very important because without this one line, if I comment out this one line, we've added the functionality in here to say, call this, when you add the class big, call this add photo method. All right, sure enough, we can come in here, take a look at the container, and when we hit that breakpoint, we're gonna see that the class big gets added. But I'm going on and on and on, and what I'm doing is I am adding hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images because every time I resize this, so it's like it's happening almost every single pixel, well, I don't want to do that. I want to say, you know what? There's only one image that I want to add, one image element. So we can say, when we resize, get to this point, add an image. But we're only adding one. So inside this section two, inside that paragraph, there it is. There's the one image that I've added. Okay, that worked. So I created an image element, I generated a random number, I set the source, I set the alt, and then I appended the image to the page. There's nothing new here that I haven't covered in a lot of other videos about working with the DOM. We're just creating an HTML image tag, setting its source, and appending it to the paragraph. But we're only doing it for the first image. If the image already is on the page in the HTML, don't do it again. All right, so we're adding and removing. And that brings me down to my final thing that I wanted to mention. This is just an aside, but a brand new feature that's going to be in Chrome 80. Um, so right now, I think Chrome 79 point something is the current version. And that's why I'm using Chrome Canary, which is the sort of developer preview version of Chrome. It's always a little bit ahead of what the actual Chrome version is. Inside of here, we have this new feature called optional chaining which looks like this. Instead of doing this, where I'm saying, go find the image element inside of here, and then that image element, find its parent, call the remove child method. Well, what if there was no image element inside of here? This is going to be undefined. There is no image element inside of there. Now, it's possible that we could get to that point. So if that's the case, if there is no image element to remove, when I try to find the parent element of an image, and if this variable is undefined, this is gonna cause an error. So optional chaining, brand new feature with uh, ES 2019 or 2020. This will now check to see if image exists, get its parent element, and then call remove child. If it doesn't exist, the rest of this code, this part right here, doesn't run. So I'm going to make another video where I will talk about optional chaining a little bit later, but for now, there's a little preview of it. And that means we've got this fully functional website that is using that cool new resize observer that lets us change functionality. Now I've done a very simple thing here, I've just added an element and remove the element when it resizes, but you can make this trigger any JavaScript at all that you want. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. If you found this useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.